Hi everyone, Paula here from Goes to 11 Media bringing you another episode of Grounds for Divorce Coffee Bean Reviews. I'm joined here by my husband Rick. Hi. How's it going Shirley? Hey Laverne, what's up with you? Got the big L on my shirt. Yeah. So actually it's not for Laverne and Shirley, it's actually for uh, a very dear friend of ours, Laura Cornelli, uh, out in White Rock, BC, who has Laura's Coffee Corner. Yes. And uh, I'm a huge fan of her food and baking and uh, her coffee and all the rest of that stuff. So wanted to do a big shout out for them. They need some support because of the lockdowns and all the rest that's happening to mm -hmm. their restaurants. It's a tough time for restaurant owners and cafe mm -hmm. owners. So uh, do a little shout out. If you guys are in the uh, lower mainland area of BC here, Head on out to uh, Laura's and uh, give her some support. She's awesome. And I'll put the link to her website down below for you. And check out the back. I love the back of this shirt. This shirt was kind of cool. I just love it. Hey, let's see if I can turn around here. It's pretty tight in here. But without knocking everything over. But that was clever. Oh, oh, look, oh dear, look at the time. <laughs> kind of fun? Yes. Right? So, anyways, this is a different episode for us for Grounds for Divorce. Yes. The minimalist edition. <laughs> we, we, um, we're doing something a little different today that I, I mentioned to Paula that I wanted to try because um, I had a really fun uh, visit with uh, a good friend of mine, our neighbor next door, Randy, uh, socially distanced outside. Uh, but we had a great visit and we we're talking about coffee and, and Randy's very knowledgeable about coffees and uh, he has the, the real fancy espresso maker and what have you. But we were talking about the whole idea for, you know, blooming the coffee when you do a pour over, etc. Mm -hmm. And it started me thinking, and I hadn't seen any of the videos that, that I watched today for some follow up. And I was going, I wonder if, because when you do a pour over coffee, the proper way to do it is basically you rinse the filter. Mm -hmm. Then you put your coffee in, you measure your weight out for your coffee, then you do your pour over for just enough to wet the, the grounds and you allow the bloom to happen. Then you wait, what is it, about 45 seconds or something like that? 30 seconds? About 30 seconds, yep. Then you start doing your, your pour over and I'm going, well if they do that for a pour over, what about when you're doing an espresso shot? Because when you do an espresso shot, you're just cranking the water right through that, uh, that puck Mm -hmm. And it's not really blooming per se, it's because it's a whole pour usually mm -hmm. is 30 to 40 seconds, depending on your machine. In some cases it can be even faster. Right, so the purpose of the bloom is to let some of the CO2 escape. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and at the same time it sort of gets the, the grounds even a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. So then it's you're, you're going to start to pull out more of the flavors and stuff. So so I thought, hey, let's try something. So our Breville Barista Express we have has a function on it where you have, you have the dial, you turn it one way and it gives you the steam for your steamer and you turn it the opposite direction and it's instant boiling hot water for pouring. So what I did is I ground uh, a, a puck as usual, the, the filled the uh, portafilter up and tamped it. And then what I did is I put it underneath the water and just short little burst just to get it so it was we'll call it saturated. Mm -hmm. And we got it to the point where just before water started to drip out. So it was fairly wet, but it wasn't like soaking wet. Uh, and then what I did is I then put it onto the machine and ran a full regular sh uh, double shot. Now it did not get the bars as high. No, the as pressure it, the, wasn't. The, the, it wasn't as high. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the pour was about the same longevity, pretty close. Okay. We should have probably timed it for pre precision purposes, but from what I, I remember, it was within a, a very reasonable difference between the other one. And then as the control, I did one like we ordinarily would do, just grind it, tamp it, put it on the, the machine and do a pour, uh, a, an espresso shot. So we have a taste test to do here to see how does it taste? But is there any difference? Both of them got the crema on the surface. So that happened. I'm hearing weird things too. I'm hearing weird stuff. Like some people are saying crema is just is garbage. Some people are saying crema is important. And it's kind of like, oh, is there a new a new sort of uh, theory coming out about crema? 
because it was interesting. I watched a video with James Hoffman and the guy said, ah, crap is garbage. <laughs> and I was like, um, interesting. I think it just depends on your preferences and your tastes. I don't think necessarily that James Hoffman doesn't like No, it was the other guy that he was interviewing who said it. Oh, okay. Right? And so it's interesting to see if there's a little bit of mm. uh, new theories coming about crema, whether or not it's an important thing or it's not an important well, thing. Well, some say that crema can be a bit bitter. I like the crema myself. I think it's neat. It's the experience, right? <laughs> if you don't have crema, you're just kind of like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I find that it, it richens up, like when you have the foam on the latte, mm. it really gives a rich flavor to the, to the foam, so it's quite nice. So what we have here is two cups. One has the uh, straight regular shot, the other, and both are double shots. And the other one has the one where we moisturized pre-moisturized. We bloomed. Bloomed. <laughs> moisturized and conditioned. Oh my god. Nice choice of words. <laughs> Somebody with dry skin, that's all I ever think about it. <laughs> moisturized and conditioned. Anyways, we, we bloomed it. Uh, and the coffee that we're featuring today is... Commercial Drive Coffee. So locally roasted in Vancouver. Developed in... Uh, Let's see if I can hold this to you. It has the East Van kind of a cross thing going on there too, which is kind of funky. So kind of cool. That's a, anybody who lives in Vancouver knows about the East Van cross. Um, bit of a landmark. So, and we've mentioned that before when we did the We Love Van coffee segment. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. So what, what about these fellows and uh, ladies? They're a cooperative uh, with a bunch of local roasters and they just try to recreate sort of like a original coffee from way back when. And uh, yeah, it smells pretty awesome. We haven't mm -hmm. tried it yet. Packaging's um, cool, I like it. Yeah. Right. It's very cool and they've got their uh, Instagram. They're telling you got Instagram, Facebook and all that on there. That's cool, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so we don't know which one's which. I already did the mix up of which cup is which. Now these are not our traditional tasting spoons. Well, is there a reason to your madness on that? Well, because we have smaller cups. <laughs> but my mouth is just as big. <laughs> All right, so start. Which one do you want to start with? Well, let's try this one. Okay. Should we stir the crema? Sure, you might as well. So it looks good. It doesn't look uh, like there's a lot of oils and stuff that I can see. It smells nice. good mm -hmm. um bit of a bitter bit of a bittering on that mm. not bad though mm -hmm. and now again this is a stronger obviously having just a straight up double shot of espresso is not like having a pour over and it's not like having a latte so it's a little more intense the flavor notes you're going to get out of it um definitely it's it's good i like it well done mm -hmm. okay the question will be is which one is better all right, I should need to go with this one. Yes, I will. Okay. You know what? It's good. I like it. Does it taste the same? <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't taste really a whole lot different to me. You know? It has more punchiness to it. It's very similar to me. It's not a make it or break it to me. Did you just crack that on your teeth? Yep. <laughs> Ting! <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, that's good. Now this is where we go. This is like the eye doctor appointment. Wait a minute. I want to try the other one again. Better one. Better two. Better oh, one. No. <laughs> you know when you go to the eye doctor and they do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so which one do you think is which? Which one is the, the one we did the uh, uh, pre-bloom water infusion? Not easy to tell, is it? Um, can we get some boiling water and do this uh, Americanos? No, you need to... <laughs> 
Can I use my cheat sheets and look at the cup? No. <laughs> <laughs> so which one? Um, it's hard to say. This has... Um, They're both good. This has a teeny bit more punch to it. Okay. Now, can you explain punch? What does that mean? Like this one has a more, I don't want to say mellow earthiness to it, okay. but kind of. And then this one just has more of a... Acid? Acid, sour punch to it. Okay. Like acidic. Okay. So... Ha! This one was the one that we did the pre-infusion of water with. This one? That one. Even though I wrote on it and put regular? Yeah. You just met, mixed it up. Yep, that's the one. So this is the pre-infusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you think? I, I think they're both good. Um, but do you notice a difference? Minimal, like it's it's minimal. As I say, this one might have had, to me, had maybe a smidge of bittering, but nothing where I'd be like, I don't want to drink it. Um, here's, here's the real question that needs to be answered. <clears throat> Going through all those additional steps of wetting it, waiting, wetting it, waiting, getting it so that you get just the right amount of water through it so it's not filtering through and, and causing the, uh, the the loss of the, the coffee. Is that step worth it compared to just tamping it, putting it onto the unit and just doing a regular pour through, uh, like espresso shot? I'm going to say no. I would probably agree with you. I think However, that... your method... Mm -hmm. Although it was, you know, kind of creative, thoughtful. Isn't quite wait for it. Wait like for it. What, the, what the experts would do. You know, like how they put in the filters and tapping and all that, which is way more steps, which, which is not experts. what I want. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the other thing too, is what, what steps, you know, are you the 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 coffee drinker mm -hmm. are you wanting to do because it's it's like we watched a, a video with um, our, our good friend uh, Rob Peary from uh, Cedar Oda Coffee down in the States and he was doing the mocha pot which was a great video check it out I'll put the link in the description um, great little video where he talks about the mocha pot and then <laughs> get a kick. Robbie you, you cracked me up uh, where he took this filter and put it over top of the grounds to stop the, you know sort of the some of the larger stuff becoming emulsified and coming up into the the, the, mm. the coffee mm -hmm. but he, you know his own thing was he goes it's not endorsed by the manufacturer it's not something you probably should do don't do this at home <laughs> it could explode <laughs> so you know do i want to go through all those additional steps probably not you know you know what i just want to have my coffee and uh, i am not such as viewers of this channel will tell you. <laughs> I'm not a super um, particular person about detecting all the different subtleties and flavors. That's more mm -hmm. your your jam. Um, if it, To me, if it, it's either good or it's bad. You know, it's on or off, it's binary. <laughs> so uh, it's either a good cup of coffee or it's a bad cup of coffee to me. You know, I mean, I, I enjoy the flavors that you can get, but it doesn't rule my decisions. Yeah. So. Kind of an interesting little experiment to try, mm -hmm. right? And, and it, the coffee itself is pretty good. I'm actually I like it. Commercial Drive did an awesome job mm -hmm. on their Park Drive, of which Park Drive I think wasn't that the original name prior to Commercial Drive being named Commercial Drive? Probably, probably. I think so. Um, interesting area uh, mm -hmm. in Vancouver, Commercial mm -hmm. Drive. Uh, it's. Uh, that's also like Little Italy and all that down there, and there's mm -hmm. just tons of uh, great when COVID's not happening, great uh, restaurants and cafes and stuff. It's uh, just a magic part of town down there to, mm -hmm. to explore. So, hopefully, we get through this quickly and uh, get some semblance of life back, and these businesses survive. And, mm -hmm. and, and if you come to Vancouver, you should check out Commercial Drive because there's a lot of cool stuff down there. Absolutely. So, all right. Anything else you want to impart? Nope. There you go. All right. Well, I thank you very much for indulging me in this uh, experiment. 
I wasn't into it in the beginning. She wasn't. <laughs> I was like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> are we doing pour overs? Are we doing lattes? I'm like, no, I just want to do this. Alrighty. So I turn to the side. No, I just want to drink coffee like this. <laughs> serenity now, serenity now. <laughs> Okay, Seinfeld. There you go. All right, <laughs> listen, um, don't forget to check out our store, groundsfordivorcecoffee.ca or groundsfordivorcecoffee.store. And uh, we will catch you all on the next segment. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Take care, guys. <laughs>